Mark Mednanski, CEO of Del Frisco's Restaurant Group, is here. He's here to talk about the Steakhouse Indicator. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Greg. Good to be here. All right. Shares of your stock are flying. So are some of the other Steakhouse stocks. How closely does your business track the market? Uh, well, that's, that's a good question. When the stock market is moving, uh, people feel good. And when consumer confidence is up, especially with high-end guests, we do extremely well. All right, well, your company went public last summer at 13, which That's was actually right. below the range. Now you're trading at right. 18.50. Do you feel a little bit of vindication, or are you mad that you left some money on the table? Well, I'll tell you what, we're not mad about leaving money on the table. When we went out, we knew it was a challenging time. Everyone was worried about beef prices, corn. There was a drought. There were a few people before us that had difficulty. But my job as a CEO is to worry about the markets and let my operators worry about giving a great stake and a great experience. And if we do that, the stock will do well. All right, let's talk about where the business is now. Uh, your first quarter, which you came out with about two weeks ago, right. your revenues are up 13%. Comp sales down half a percent. We That's can right. call it flat. So tell me about what's going on right now. Good. So first quarter started tough. Uh, January was a tough month for everyone in fine dining. Rebounded nicely, ended the quarter strong, and we've seen it. We've said it publicly. We've seen some uh, strength going into Q2, and uh, we think that the American public is good. They're used to the tax increases, and people want to dine. They want to eat great steak and drink good wine. How important to you is your New York flagship store? Your Del Frisco is right here in New York. Mm -hmm. It's about probably a fifth of your business. Right. So tell me what goes on in this particular branch. Well, this branch, what I'm most proud of, of this restaurant, even though it's the busiest steakhouse in the country, I'm more proud of the resiliency of this unit. I mean, this unit through 9-11, through the uh, recession in 2008 and 9, came out like a champ. Well, we still did $30 million in that restaurant, Greg, in 2009, when other people were struggling. So it's, it's, it's a standard bearer. And as you add more restaurants, you have three different chains. You have right. Sullivan's, you have Del Frisco's Grill, you have right. Del Frisco's Double Eagle. Will that affect your margins? Because you get a real nice margin in New York That's because right. you have tourists here, you have Wall Street people here. We're willing to pony up those higher prices for those higher tickets. But what about other markets? Oh, that's a great question. Now, we see, you know, whatever city we go in with the Double Eagle first, let's say Del, Del Frisco's Double Eagle, we end up being the leader in that city. We opened in Boston two years ago, and we're just, we're, we're, we're doing very well in Boston. People in Boston love Del Frisco's. What this grill concept does, and this is the, the real growth vehicle for us right now, is add uh, a, a new complexity to our company. Lower cost of sales, about 300 basis points lower than the steakhouses. Uh, very a higher bar mix, close to 40% versus the 35 in the steakhouses. So even though you might not have the high dollar sales per item, uh, that concept makes a lot of money. And I think you're adding five Del Frisco's grills this year. Exactly where where right. are they going to be and why are you going with this? It's not a low-end steakhouse, but, no. um, but not, not the highest, highest right. one. So, so the grill was built to really be a, another vehicle, another choice for, for the upper middle class and, and, and the high-end guests. Uh, we want a great burger and a glass of beer you can get at the grill. But if you want a prime New York steak, you want a bottle of Bordeaux, you have that too at the grill. It's really the best of both worlds. We think that the dining guests, when they don't want a steakhouse experience, still are going out. But they want a high-end experience at a lower price point for their other dining needs, and that's what the grill gives them. And then finally, what about your costs? Where's the cost of beef right, right. now? Uh, what about labor? Is that moving up? Right. So last year when we went public, as you were talking about earlier, everyone was worried about beef. Every year, uh, I've been in the steakhouse business 25 years. Every year it's drought, it's famine, it's uh, snow, it's uh, All ethanol, the plagues. Every, everything. Uh, we're really in tune with what's going on in the beef business and we have the best and brightest working for us. In our graph of cost of sales, if you look at over the last 10 years, Greg, it's a nice boring straight line graph. We're able to control costs better than our competitive set because we're not as dependent on beef as some of our steakhouse competitors. Only 33% of our sales are beef. We, we sell more alcohol than our competitors, more seafood than our competitors, and because of that, we're able to hedge, especially the beef costs when they do rise. All right, thanks a lot, Mark. Thank you, Greg. Thank you for watching The Street.